I'm Dan Haggerty. She created a business, a room, to let people take out their aggressions in a safe way. Tonight, family and friends believe that Donna Alexander died in a violent death. Yona Gavino now with our top story. Everybody is really in shock. Toria Bradford is heartbroken over the murder of her best friend, Donna Alexander. How can you take such a beautiful, beautiful spirit? away from us. Alexander's sister, Lauren, believes Donna died at the hands of her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Nathaniel Mitchell. He broke in her bedroom window because um, he was beating her on the door and they wouldn't let him in. The children were in their room, so they locked themselves in a the room. They were afraid. Shards of glass in Alexander's home paint a picture of the violence that followed. The children heard the screams and they said that was around 3, 3.30 in the morning, Friday morning. And it wasn't until 5.05 .05 in the morning that he took her to the hospital. Grand Prairie police say Mitchell told officers she fell in the shower. To find out that she herself was dealing with domestic violence and no one really knew what was going on with this man, it's just heartbreaking, you know, that she, she didn't speak up. Is this the place to break stuff? Donna created the Anger Room in 2008 here in North Texas as a place for people to destroy something safely. CBS News interviewed her for a story in 2016. It's just a way to release the anger. Her legacy is bigger than the Anger Room, though. Do whatever it is you need to do to keep joy and positivity in your life. There are endless memories of her acts of kindness. We handed out flowers and gift bags to homeless people on the street and she had my daughter out there telling people that she loved them. For those who loved her, it's something to hold on to. She made an impact. You know, um, she had a big heart. She just wanted to help everybody. And the family says they don't know what the future of the anger room will be. It's frankly too soon to say, but they do tell me Donna's vision of helping others will live on. You know, Donna's mother was there in the room with you during the interview, right? Uh, she didn't want to go on camera. Did she say anything to you? What, what, what are her feelings now? Dan, she was too outraged to go on camera, but she hopes this story helps prevent another tragedy like the one that took her daughter's life. Dan. Yo, YouTube, YouTube, what's going on? Trey back again to hit you with a video. Now this video right here comes out of Texas by way of Dallas. Big shout out to all my peeps in Dallas, Plano, Garland area, south side of Dallas, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? All the way to Wichita Falls. Big shout out to you all also. Well, we have a very unfortunate story. And a lot of you all might have seen this story a couple years ago when it premiered on, uh, well, when it aired on CBS. Basically showing this woman goes by the name of Miss Donna Alexander. And may she rest in peace. And I'll send my condolences out to her family, her mom, her sister, her friends, her kids, everyone in uh, the Alexander family that is affected by this devastating death. Now, you would think that somebody that, you know, helped other people relieve stress and anger issues, where she had the anger room where people basically go and bash things like TVs, computers, laptops, pads, anything that could be destroyed, they would try to destroy it just to let off anger just to release some kind of stress because you know sometimes you just need to knock the hell out of something and it's better you go to a designated place to knock the hell out of an object instead of a person so i can feel her uh i can feel her pain and also i can feel her motivation and her point overall to why she was doing this ultimately she was hiding how she really felt and probably wishing inside that she could knock the hell out of this guy who ended up taking her life now, her and this guy have been having a rocky relationship as the story goes. But what makes it so bad? You know, when people show you who they are, like I always say, believe them. When people show you who they are the first time, believe them. Stop giving people second and third chance because just like the story from New York about the guy that got out of Rackers Island and killed this woman eight hours later, she must have knew that she was going to wind up hurt because she gave her cell phone, her keys, her purse uh, to her friend and said, if anything happened to me, called this number right here and exactly eight hours later after he was released out of jail he killed her so it's kind of sad that when you know somebody don't really mean you no good but you have such a weak heart and that's why i tell people you have to stop having such a weak heart for people when people show you who they are believe them because i guarantee you if she would have kept that door closed and unless he would have just kicked it in which who's to say if he wouldn't have did that because if he's that crazy to do this who to say if he wouldn't have done that so what i mean by this is that when somebody really show you that they don't mean you no good and they don't give a damn about you and they will put their hands on you, you have to make a decision, especially if you have children. Forget this fool that you with. 
think about yourself and your kids and, and what kind of future will your children have if you was to leave this earth. I'm going to read a snippet from this story and I'm going to get my opinion. Surely as we go. Anger Room found her allegedly being to death by X. New relationship would be the death of her, her sister said. And also she was trying to reform this guy. But one thing about it, just like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, you cannot reform devil. And I know a lot of you all might see my shoebox. Don't worry. It won't be that type of thing. I'm just uh, still unpacking and everything. I got a lot of stuff to move and put up. So in case a lot of you all be wondering what goes on in the background, instead of wondering about the message I'm delaying, uh, relaying to you all, not delaying, relaying is the word I want to use. Because some people be looking in the background like, you know, this and that, instead of worry about the message that's coming out the person's mouth. So for those who want to know, that's your answer right there. But anyway, now as an advocate for victims of violence, Donna Alexander could see the emotional and physical pain that others suffer from abusive relationships, but she could not save herself. And if you grew up in a home where you've seen your parents being violent toward each other or your mom, you know what I'm saying, getting jumped on by boyfriends, men who she thought loved her, then ultimately find out they don't love her. And by then it's too damn late. So if you ever grow up in a home and you've seen your mom, sister, anybody getting beat up by grown ass men that didn't mean them no good, you know exactly how this feel. Now, she kept praying to God to fix him. Now, that's the sad thing about it, that she kept praying to God to fix this guy. Alexander's sister, Lauren D. Omar, tells uh, the news. After an alleged beating by Alexander's ex-boyfriend, that led her to her death. So she kept praying, Lord, please fix this guy. Please fix this fool. You know what I'm saying? Because she must evidently really had a heart for people or she had love for him or she just was blinded by compassion and sometimes you can be blinded by that when you only see uh what could be and not what's really reality you know how like you have this dream you know what i'm saying that you can see this person changing and morphing into the special person that you want them to be which just be you know what i'm saying calm your anger down stop being so stressed out stop being mad about everything because you got some guys and some women also but we talking about men that would just blow a fuse over any little thing so who knows what this woman was going through but the fact that she was praying about it and then she went to her family even uh consoled and them how she felt shows that she really had a good heart and that it's sad you know we, we lost a, a true a true uh a true gem a, a true person you know it's sad because she's trying to help somebody else even though she was going through her own stuff and that's really the point of the story right there that's what really touched me the most the fact that she was getting her butt whooped i'm not trying to sound funny or anything it's just the truth that's just the way i talk she was getting her butt whooped but yet it's still she still felt other people's pain she wasn't putting her pain out there on front street just like a lot of people do they get in fights and so they call everybody put it on facebook uh calling each other out their names in public and then leaving text messages and all that. She wasn't doing none of that. She was basically trying to weather the storm. But sometimes these storms cannot be weathered. Sometimes you just have to know when to close shop and go on by your business. But she already tried to do that. But she's like a lot of other snakes. They slick their way back in there. That's why I say once your door closed and it's meant to be closed, keep it closed. And if you need some help keeping it closed, buy you some super glue, some wooden nails, and seal it shut because I'm telling you, you don't want that snake to come back in your house. Once it's gone, him or her, because it's not just the bash guys or talk about guys. Once him or her is gone, keep that door closed. Now, the written revelations in her journals kept at Alexander's bedside were discovered by Armour and the sister's mom, uh, Daphne Lassiter. After Alexander died from an attack at her Grand Prairie, Texas home on September the 21st. She kept saying in the journals, I know he has problems. I know that he has post-traumatic stress. He making up excuses for this guy. Me personally, let me just keep it real. I don't give a damn what you have. Once you start putting your hands on me, you're going to be uh somewhere stinking. You're going to be somewhere in the ground. Forget all this post-traumatic stress because you're going to give me post-traumatic stress. Now, I'm going to be the one crazy with your crazy ass. And that's the same thing. That's a, that's a, that's a sad thing about it is that people who you know are no good. And I've been there before when I was dealing with females who I know wasn't no good, who just wanted me for money or whatever the hell else they can get out of me. And then once you wise up and you realize that, like, you know what? Unless you want to be a fool and be played like a fool, you know what I'm saying? Don't put yourself in a fool position because you have to be crazy to think somebody has all these issues and stuff, but yet and still they can still find a way to love you and hurt you at the same time. That don't go together. I don't understand how love and hurt can go together. It's either one or the other. Either you love me or you want to hurt me. I don't understand nothing else. Now, she kept saying, let's repeat this. 
in her journals because you know a lot of people keep journals especially uh women some of you men do it also I and mean, that's not calling you soft or weak some people just do i mean that's a good thing now he, she also says i know he has problems i know that he has post-traumatic stress but he's who i want to be my husband please fix him arm robber calls see it's like having something that you can't have you know what i'm saying and it's a sad thing about it because a lot of people want things that they cannot have she says she wants this guy to be her husband truthfully evidently she must really love the guy she had to to go to her family and keep it all on the wrap because the first time you hear some of these women even if you get a little too loud to them especially if it ain't your house fellas what they'll do put your ass out or they'll call the cops on you and tell you to lower your voice some of y'all might have got told that last night and it's okay some of you women might have got told that last night but guess what when you pay the cost to be the boss you can run your uh, ship the way you want to run it but at the same time she was trying to make something work that possibly couldn't even work it's like you working on a damn uh puzzle jigsaw puzzle whatever you want to call it and you got this certain piece but this piece don't fit and you can see with your eyes literally that it does not fix but yet it's still you still try to jam that piece in that spot twisting it turning it flipping it upside down uh retrying and retrying when you know it won't fit how many times must it take you to bump your head to realize that it won't fit and what i mean by that is just to let it go that's all you got to do let it go turn your back Wipe the dust off your shoulders, the dirt off, and lift your head high and smile and say thank you like it's still on the song says thank you and keep going forward. Because I'm telling you one thing, if you think, if you think that that is love, that is not love. And it's only one way that's going to end. That's somebody wind up hurt or dead, just like in this situation. Now, brought by ex Nathaniel Mitchell, sound like somebody that'll put some hands on your ass to a hospital where he initially said, she had slipped in the shower. Now, he whooped her ass, then going to sit there and lie about it. I don't expect him to sit there and tell the truth, but at the same time, I don't expect him to sit there and beat no woman ass. I mean, let's just be for real. The 35-year-old Alexander was taken off life support, beat this woman into a coma, and succumbed to her injuries. On September the 24th, she appeared on a September episode of The Real Housewives of Dallas. As the founder of the local Angle Room, a facility that allows people to break things as a way to relieve stress. Now, she's trying to help other people to relieve their stress, but at the same time, she's catching hell behind her own back door. And that's what's so special about this person to me. You know what I'm saying? So when you come across people like this, you got to honor them. It's all about honor. You have to lift them up in the highest regard because this woman, like I said, was going through pure hell. She's dead now. So evidently, it was very serious. But she kept it all on the wrap. She wasn't calling the police on this guy like a lot of people would. And she should have. Don't sit up here and save this fool because you never know. That might have been your chance to get off and round him. But sure as shit stinking, it doesn't. And if it don't, you need to go check yourself. Go to the doctor. But if she would have did what she was supposed to do, now I ain't talking about calling the police over any little thing. But the moment you start putting your hands on somebody and for you men and women want to say, well, why you got to call the pigs? Why you got to call the cops, the pigs, whatever you want to call them? Or you snitching. But what if that was your mama and daddy? What if that was your little sister, your big sister, your grandma, your auntie? Or what if that was your ass? You know what I'm saying? Because men get killed and beat up by women too. You ain't seen the two stories I did about the woman with the frying pans. I mean, let's, let's, be, let's just keep it real. So that goes either way. It's all good and fun and games. You know what I'm saying? Until you become the victim, become till you become the one getting attacked. And then you will wish somebody would help or speak out for you. So that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not telling you just call the police or any little thing because I don't believe in calling police neither. But sometimes you have to. So at least get a record of it because you never know. It might come to an old Wild Wild, wild, wild West showdown in the 12 o'clock noon or 12 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? He might have his gun out. You might have yours out. At least you can have a record to prove, look, this bastard been violent to me. So if I take his or her life, not just talking about men, but his or her men or any women, you know, make sure you're in the right. That's one thing I will always say. If you know about any videos, try to stand on the right side. Because if you stand for what's right, trust me, you'll be all right in the end. Even if you do have to go to jail for a couple of days until they can sort the case out or whatnot. But make sure you're right. And even if worse come to worse, at least you can go to sleep knowing that you was right. That's all I'm trying to say. Because if he come to taking somebody's life, I know me personally, I want to be on the right end. So when I uh, meet my maker and he asks me about this, for those who believe, I want to sit up here and be justified. That's all I'm saying. You can believe what you want to believe. Now, after his initial arrest on a charge of aggravated assault, Mitchell, 34 years old, but look at every bit of 48 years old. And shout out to all my people. Big shout out to all my people that's 48 out there listening right now. To my man, I don't look like that. I know you don't. I know some 48-year-old men that's very handsome. I know some 48-year-old women that are beautiful and very sexy. They got a backyard like a Benzie. So it's not about... Uh, 
putting people down for his age. The point is you got people young as hell looking old as hell in the face. That's what the point I'm trying to make. Now, he sits in a Tarrant County jail charged with Alexander's murder. He is being held in lieu of a $250,000 bond. It could not be determined if he has entered a plea or retained an attorney. And anyone really matter, not in the state of Texas, especially dealing with this case. Somebody that was a high profile person in the city too. Oh, you can you can uh toot your head toward the ground and kiss your ass bye bye. And a prayer request request days before she died. Now she was requesting prayer and everything, trying her best to find that inner light. Alexander pleaded for help for Mitchell, still pleading for this bouncer, this devil. Although she did not share her burden with other parishioners, and sometimes you have to let the cat out the bag. Trust me, if you don't lost somebody in your family, I'm sure I'm talking to quite a few people right now that don't lost people due to domestic violence situation, whether it was a man and a woman. Because remember, too, women kill men also, like the song say, men lie, women lie. So it's equal, the same. You know what I'm saying? We're not here to put down men. We're just here to tell these stories how they come across this desk. That's it. If, if, if the woman killed the man, then guess what? I'm going to be on the, man, the woman ass. If, if the man killed a woman, I'm going to be on his ass. But at the same time, it's still balance. Try to bring balance. So she should have shared this story. And also, if you are going through situations like this with somebody putting their hands on you, go talk to somebody. And if it get worse than that, call the damn police. At least get some damn reports. So at least if something do happen, if your family don't do nothing, because I come from a family, we hold each other down. We have each other back. And, that, and that's all the way across the board. Even though we might fight amongst each other like Tupac say, but trust me, it is. We burn this bitch down, get us pissed. You feel me? So we're we going to stand together. And that's what you need, because I guarantee you, if you have a strong uh, father figure in your life, or brothers that, that don't play that's about that life, or uncles or cousins, these guys would think twice because guess what? After they deal with you, they would have to deal with them. And also men, if you have a woman that want to get crazy all the time and you got a mom that's crazy, a sister that's crazy, I don't believe in bringing your family in. But sometimes you got to let people know, look, I got some backup because people talk shit to you, especially when they get you alone. That's why a lot of people want you to be alone. They want you isolated. So once you isolated, <laughs> you defeated. But guess what? You around all they people, but you ain't around none of your people. So when shit pop off, who you think they who's who whose side you think they're gonna take? They're gonna take their family side because guess what? Blood is thicker than water in most cases, and especially if they don't like you or they're jealous of you. That's gonna finish. Now, she did not share her burden with other parishioners, said Brown Carter, the associate pastor of Crossroads Christian Church, according to the local TV station. Her very last prayer request was for her assailant. She prayed for this guy, uh Carter said, the preacher said. His heart's not right. And she prayed that his heart was softened. So evidently, she must have had an epiphany, a revelation that something bad was going to happen to her. A uh, uh, small case of deja vu, if you will, because, you know, warning comes before destruction. You, you know, so we have to notice that also. You've seen the movie Final Destination, even though that's some Hollywood rea uh, fake reality type stuff. But it's certain things in there that are very true. Whereas there are signs to everything. You know what I'm saying? It's a sign to this. The signs was already there, but we ignore those signs. You know, when the guy was beating, putting his hands on her already, having her to go through all this stuff, that was your sign right there. Look, bridge is out, bridge is out, bridge is out, but we keep going down that road. We keep driving. Matter of fact, some of us push our damn feet down harder on the pedal, the pedestal to make the car go faster. So as we going faster, we're not noticing all these signs because everything moving fast. You know, with your day-to-day -day lives, going to work, taking care of yourself, taking care of your children because she had children, you know. Being in the church because she was a church person, uh, helping other people out with the anger room to help them relieve their stress. She's doing all these other things, but not noticing the signs that's on the highway. You're about to crash. You're about to crash. Exit. Turn left right now. Detour. Next thing you know, you hit a brick wall or you run off the cliff, which is this guy ultimately killing her when all the signs was there to exit and leave this bastard alone. Now, Omar tells the news station that her sister's journal shows she wrestled with her conflicting feelings from Mitchell, just like a lot of you all, when you know a guy or a woman is no good for you, but yet and still, you still want that bastard around, and it ultimately costs you losing your sanity or somebody winding up hurt or dead or in jail. She would ask God to fix them, asking the most how to fix them, and then the next thing you know, her journey would say, what am I fighting for, which means her, her prayers were not getting answered because that's what, that wasn't the place the most high God wanted her to be. You know what I'm saying? That's why it wasn't changing. Because if it's not meant to be, no matter how much you pray, you can pray till your knees get blood and you can play till your hands stick together or your mouth just get dry until you can't utter, utter another word. But guess what? If it's not meant to be, 
It's not going to be because if it's not meant for her to be with this person and the most I had a better plan for her, you were getting, the, getting in the way when the sign was to exit and leave this guy alone. He had a bigger purpose for you instead of trying to save somebody who did not want to be saved. What's that old song? Don't save them. They don't want to be saved. This type of situation. And she says, what am I fighting for? It's at that point where we just feel used up, depleted. All resources are gone, which is love and emotion and feeling. And once they get gone, you just start resenting the person. And then that resentment turn into bitterness, to sourness, to hate. And it's just best to leave because sooner or later, you might jump on their ass, just flash out. You know, some people just do that. Just, just start knocking the shit out of you for all the stuff that you done did to them in the years. She says, why am I trying to make a man love me? Who doesn't? Just like a lot of you all, you try to make a person love you, man or woman, depends on whichever way you rock. That's your preference. I don't care. You try to make people who love you that won't love you. I mean, if somebody don't love you, you can't make them love you. Love, love don't cost a thing. It's no price to love. That is free. So if somebody can give you something for free, why take out any time with them? Something that's going to cost you money and more than money, your life. Now, she acted between wanting to keep this man, but also knowing that it was toxic. Omarra says, just like a lot of you all, you try to keep these people. When you know damn well, it don't mean you no good. They're using you for your car, for your house, your money, your job. And they show you every day in their actions. They don't give a damn about you. They might kiss you on your cheek and tell you, ooh, baby, you so sweet every now and then. But guess what? That don't amount to a hill of beans when they're showing you that they don't give a damn about you. She even knew that it would be the death of her. It was in her in her journal. She even wrote about this. So why did she not get off the highway? You know what I'm saying? Why did she not get off that highway and just leave his ass in that car? And if, and if he want to run and crash and run off the bridge or whatever, the cliff, let him. But get out the car, which means exit the relationship. Alexander had committed herself from a young age to make a difference in the lives of others, Omar said, just a given person. My sister had a given a heart, she says. As one example, she says, Alexander taught herself to sew and made prom dresses for students who couldn't otherwise afford them. And it's sad, the good die young. The people that's here trying to make a real difference in life. Those are the ones that get taken out of here the earliest and these devils live forever on. Notice how many old people that we see you know, we got some in our family that ain't no good, ain't never helped nobody. They outlive people, you know what I'm saying, by a long shot. They still existing, but the people who came in and tried to make a difference and was that special person in each and one of our families, because we all got that special person. Some of us got more than one, but, but we at least got one. It's strange how they wind up dying strange deaths, and we wonder why they get taken out at an early age. And as you get older, you look around like, well, all the other people here that ain't about shit, why are they still alive? That's amazing to me. That's like a riddle of life, if you will. I guess God take them before they can get corrupted for those who believe. That's just my theory right there. Now, she cooked for and helped feed the homeless and contributed to give away bags filled with hygiene products, basically just looking out for people. All she ever wanted to do was just help people, Omar says. It didn't matter what their background was. If she had it, she would give it. It didn't matter where they come from, ex con white, black, pink, purple, fat, skinny, whatever. She didn't care. She was just a very given person. And like I said, my condolences goes out to her family, her sister, her mom, and also her kids. But it's just a crime shame when you know that this person would be the death of you, but yet it's still you still choose to stick around. Let this be a lesson for you all. When the first time the shit get hot, and I'm talking about if it's serious enough, because everything ain't meant to just break up on a relationship, but you know, you know for yourself, because I'm not there in each one of you all homes, just like you're not in my home. But at least you should know this. Once it start calling and people calling you out your name, B's and H's and all this, you ain't shit and just flat out disrespecting you. Because first it start with verbalness. It start with verbal. Then it get a little more insulting. Then it just get downright degraded. And then it becomes physical. Because after they get through talking to you like a dog and you still standing out there, guess what they're going to do? They're going to come out there and just kick you out just like a dog. So to avoid all that, let them go. And like I say, everything is not worth breaking a relationship up but if somebody start putting their hands on you like they're your dad and even if your dad don't let him whoop you because uh i don't think i'm talking to any little kids right here on, on this youtube i shouldn't be but at the same time just remember that do not let nobody disrespect you and especially put their hands on you and you warn them and you warn them look make this your first and last time disrespecting me but if you ever put your hands on me you're going to have hell to pay and mean it. And don't go back on your word. And trust me, they're going to either respect it or they're going to check it. If you like the video, push that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely share this video with your friends, family, whoever is going through situations like this. Because it's a crying shame that we lost a true angel in our midst. 
over a damn devil who didn't mean her no good. And we pray for these people, hoping they would change. But if a person ain't changed by now, at the age that he was at 34, trust me, and it's sad, they're not going to change. So do yourself a favor and you change the people that you hang around. You won't have that problem. Y'all stay blessed, stay woke, stay vigilant. I'm out.